Hey everyone, welcome to the garage. And this is a video, I want to say, uh, it's kind of like, you know, one of those where you, you can't fix them all. It seems like I've been, that's been happening a lot lately. And, and I don't know if this is going to be one of the first videos where I say that or where it's kind of the context of the video or one of the videos. You can't save them all, you can't fix them all. Uh, and so that's, I guess, part of the impetus of this nice machine I have right here. It started off its life as a machine that was much older with an older old school pump on it and we're going to go through that i'm going to show you the failure right it it, it failed hard as a hard failure and uh all i was really left with was this a really beat sort of frame and we'll go through that and i'll take you through um this is kind of made through from parts so we'll go through putting this machine together and it's a really nice machine and if i i suppose if i wanted to sell it i'm going to need another hose and another wand and whatever but as a it's you know there's money in it uh, this is a nice one it's kind of like and i'll put a picture up here too um it's basically like it's an excel uh, premium it was a premium 2600 psi powered by honda a gc 160 like the five horsepower gc 160 right it had a different pump on it um so we're going to go through me kind of going over this thing and putting it together and I'll show you how I turned something that was a complete failure dud into something that uh, is really nice. And I've been using it a lot and I'm really happy with it. It's a great backup machine. And like I said, if I decide to sell it, this is something that's worth some money, right? Because it's it's an axial style pump, right? It's a horizontal shaft, really nice Honda motor on it. You got good, good power here, excellent pressure. It's a general pump. Um, I like these pumps, and I think uh, one of the guys in one of my videos said in my other vi uh, in one of my other videos that I did with some pressure washers. He looked, he saw the site. He goes, "Oh, you need to change the, the seals." Yes, this one also needs seals. So the Hurricane Sandy machine, uh, which has uh, got a Subaru engine on it, same pump. I really like these pumps. That one also needs seals. So sometime next year we're going to be doing that. In the meantime, I'm just going to make sure the oil is changed in it, and you know, keep after it and try not to destroy it. So stick with me on this one. We're going to take you through the the buildup of of a nice machine like this, made from parts. Um, some recommendations on, you know, some other things that I have laying around and what maybe to look for, what to spend the money on, what not to spend the money on, and that's also part of the other video I just did, which is. Uh, you know, I went to 13 machines and why I don't recommend, you know, buying a lot of used pressure washer stuff uh, because it's often just failure. So we'll take a look at the, what happened initially to the machine that the stuff that was on this frame and we'll go through that and then we'll get started on this build process. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. So this is the last one to look at, um, I believe, and I want to just do a quickie at it. We have mud wasps in here. It's kind of locked up. It won't pull. I'm going to start taking it apart. I don't know if we're going to be able to fix it or restore it, but uh, you know this is a heavier machine. And the reason, one of the reasons why I want to look at it now, before I move on to anything else, really, is because I want to keep one of the machines, and probably going to keep the nice, you know, idle down unit. But I'll keep, I'd rather keep this one if I get it working again. I probably have another motor. Well, let's find out. I don't know what I have anymore. That's what that's what I'm doing. That's gross. Throw that outside. Yeah. That's weird. I can't get the cover off, right? Because it's too tight. So we're going to have to pull the motor. Okay, now that the cover's off, and you can see it's really dirty. Okay. It was really bad. I, this isn't the first time I've cleaned it, but it's the first time I've taken it apart. Look, it wants to move. So there's a lot of dirt stuck in this thing. And we'll get it apart, and... I think that'll that'll help us out a lot. 
and I'm going to use my nice rotating no uh, nozzle. Then I got this one, which is completely adjustable. I'm going to check the RPM on this machine. Let's just poke around a little bit while we're here. So it's trying to move. That was running good. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll look closer later. Okay, we'll put a little bit of juice in here too. Okay, just try and turn. Check this out. All right, I got it to move a little bit. I'm cranking it with a, a ratchet. Wait till you see how this works. It's got a cam and a centric. I just blew out some more junk out of it. See how that moves? Isn't that amazing? See how the spring metal works too? That's awesome. I mean, that's not cool. That's a pretty cool pump. to 50. It might fire. You want to see if we can fire it? Let me set it up. A few moments later. All right, put some two-stroke down the plug hole. We'll put a little more. It won't really go in here, but we'll try to get some in. There's really no throttle on this. take this off so there's your pump that's your actual fuel pump works on vacuum and we want to take this carburetor off it doesn't look so happy there's a lot of bracketry here 20 minutes later all right guys that's it we blowed this off yeah we're really fortunate I got to poke out that hose finish cleaning that Finish cleaning the jet, and we'll put it all back together again, and we'll find out. Okay, so before we put it on, all right, now this tube I just cleaned out. I just rammed it out with a rod, and I just showed that because stuff came out. It was so satisfying. All right, so this is ready. All right, I didn't show installing it. You need, like, four hands to do it. You just have to assemble the whole thing together at once. All right, I got the hose hooked up. It's on. Pull choke. Oh, we get a rag. We just blew a hose. Wow, that was bad. And an awful lot of pressure came out at first, which is not good. So I think that this pump, although it may work, you could see it, it. This hose, I don't think, was really damaged. It blew that line. That's got me concerned. We go get my other hose. But these pumps, yeah. That's got me a little leery about that pump now. All right, let me see what I want to do. 
All right, I got it off, but we have a problem. I know I heard a noise in there, and it's the drive gear. So the drive gear was broken, right? And what it did was is it damaged the keyway in the crank. So we can't use that crank because it's missing too much of the keyway. You'll never be able to properly drive a pump on the load. And, you know, if you put a decent pump on that, right, you could wind up destroying the pump. So I think this machine is dead for all intents and purposes. The motor runs okay, but the shaft is very damaged. It's been knocked back so many times that material is worn off. In some cases, even chipped. There's a here. This is the part that actually had a little Allen key, and it was knocking back and forth. And you could see what it did there. It fit into here, and that's what drives it. Nice old system, but I'd say this thing, although it runs and everything, it starts up. It runs okay. I don't know what you would put on there. You're going to have problems with anything that you put on that. And if I were to put, let's say, a nice cat pump or something on here, right, you could damage the pump, and that's a $500 pump. Some of the pumps are over $100, so you could damage a hundred and something dollar pump to run on a machine that probably has come to the end of its life. All right, so I think this one's a fail. An hour later. Boy, that was a lot of work getting this off. There's a set screw that holds it onto the shaft, but all of the rust kept the collar on there. I can't heat it because there's a plastic rim, but I, I managed to work it off with some good old-fashioned blaster. Uh, I'm going to try to take the tube out now, and we're going to take a look to see if I can fix that. I don't see why I can't, but I'm going to try to get the other one out, and I have a little surprise coming up. So let me see how far I get today. I hit it with some nice degreaser, let it sit for 20 minutes or so, you know, I'm doing other stuff. scotch Bright. now I rinsed it, and then I hit, put a little acid on it. I started off with a wire wheel, but just quick in a few areas. We don't want to get that crazy with it. Let this sit, when it starts to dry, I'll put a little bit more on for one more coat. Now for the wheels, I got this old guy here, in fact this motor was on one of my videos. These wheels are still holding air from last year. This motor worked pretty good. I just want to check the shaft size. There was a pump that was on here. It was a nice general pump. So I want to go take a look at that. Um, this is just a very lightweight frame. It was an old northern tool setup. But these wheels have been holding air, so I think this is going to be our wheel candidate. Let's see. I still got some surprises. That's well, nice and clean. I wonder if I should just tape that over. Not really necessary. No, maybe. Right, this is worthless because, well, nothing on here is going to be what this once was, so probably just paint right over that. Just a quick paint job. All right, let's take a look in a few minutes. It's all cleaned off, wiped down, I blowed it. Probably a little wet in a few areas, but I put thinner on it, uh, which solvent, which is lack of thinner, a little bit of lack of thinner, a lot of mineral spirits. It's great because it's low odor, it cleans the rest of the way, and it also dries out moisture so you can get to painting real quick. I got to get the paint on now, in the next hour, so I can go chill out and rest. And it's got to dry overnight, otherwise I can't do anything with it, you know, tomorrow. All right, what do you think? All right, I laid it out. I think some of the hardware, I think it's over here. I, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a few days, maybe a week. I've had some other things going on, uh, so it was perfect, right? Um, this, by the way, was dry, surprisingly enough. I, I was shocked. It was because I do these light coats, it was dry that night, and I probably could have started working with it if I needed to in about an hour, hour and a half max, really. You could just start working with it. Now, it's not cured, and if you really grab it or bang on it or you're going to scuff it, you're going to scratch it you're gonna maybe even make it peel a little bit you might even get it on something but it, it was definitely good enough to to start assembling now the surprise is the motor over here um so the frame being done and clean this came from another project and um i don't remember it i don't think i actually i don't think i actually did a video on it, it was one of my first ones and uh, it had some issues. It didn't run as good as I'd like it to. 
the pump had some issues. I think that actually became parts for another machine that I sold. I don't know, but this did run. It ran okay. Um, we may have to go back through the carburetor again or check it over or tune it, but I think that's a kind of a fun thing to do. We could, we could do that. Let's run it first and see what it's doing. And um, I put it away, so when I took it, after running it, I did put it in the shed, so it's been up, yeah, it's pretty dry, it's bone dry in there, it's been up and out of the weather for over a year, uh, so stored well, right, drained and everything, so it should go, let's put the rest of the stuff together, um, let's see, just a quick narrative on it, right, these tires came from, again, another project on that little Briggs engine that I did, um, a lot of guys like that project, uh, but these tires, or have been holding air for over a year outside. I left it outside, that whole project outside. It's that flat base. You know, it's a decent base. It's a nice piece of steel for other projects. Uh, that other project I was referring to, this, I believe, was on that little Briggs motor. This is a general pump. This is actually my pump, okay? And it was leaking into, and we'll get a closer look, it was leaking into the valve, into the valves, excuse me, the piston area. Right in the crankcase. That's just seals. Um, but this is a general pump. It always worked very well for me. I really like this pump. I love the adjustability of the output pressure here, right, through your valving. Um, so I had this, almost the same pump, almost identical, was on that other project. So I took that one off and put it on my machine. Uh, to test it and see how good it was and, and it's been running fine. It's also starting to develop a bit of a leak So both valve bodies need to come apart and I need to get the seals and everything We need to put it back together again, but if you change the oil frequently It's not a big issue, especially if you're not using it a lot So we're gonna put this on this motor on this stand and the cat was from another job I don't remember anymore. It was from another machine that I picked up. You know, even if the machine doesn't work, when you see a cat pump on something, you know, if you see blue guys, buy it if it's cheap, right? Because this cat pump is worth quite a bit of money. It's missing, it's missing the cat that goes here, right? Which I actually found online. Um, it's also, we need to modify it it was part of an idle down so the valve cap over here is set up with a hole in it for this pressure port for the system the mechanism and cable that goes over to your control your idle control and throttle control i probably have another cap um, we want to just make it a regular pump and it doesn't have any kind of adjustable valve on it which i think you could probably buy one of those i don't think you could take one off of you know some other pump because it's going to be designed differently but you might be able to buy that um, my goal for this is to get the two pieces that we need for it uh, maybe go in and rebuild the pump and then we'll run it on like this machine and find out if if it's you know good pump and uh, and then either I'll use it especially if I convert it to adjustable or I'll sell it for a few hundred dollars um, I see them on eBay for several hundred dollars those pumps are really expensive when they're new and people like them and they buy them used, especially if you can demo out, right, that it's working. So if we have a machine like this that we could move pumps around and test things on, it's perfect. And, you know, it's actually a pressure washer too, so I can use it in case I'm working on my other machine or something goes wrong. So we can actually put pumps on, demo them, hook the, everything up to it, bring it outside. You know, you could say, well, I'll just do it on a table or something, but you know, then you're carrying everything, it's all heavy. It's gonna be on wheels, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be a nice backup system for me and for testing things. Let's get to it, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, I spoke too soon. <clears throat> these, these are the same for the most part, but the rims are different. Okay, this one has this huge inset because I need to be able to put the collar on. The collar goes here. So I'm going to go and see. Well, this one, I just need to fix that, that bulge. All right, so that'll be easy. But the other one needs a tube. But we could steal a tube from one of these guys. Now, I can't put this small of a rim in my other machine. i got to get some nice tire irons, right, because this is no good, right, using this stuff. You, know, you damage things. 
but it does work, right? So we want to avoid the tube. We just got to get, yeah, there's the tube there. We don't want to pinch the tube. We might need a smaller screwdriver. But if we could just lift this up, now there's a lot of junk in here. This was left open, and so there's a lot of junk inside. So what I usually do is something like this. And it's just a big piece of threaded rod that I made. I kind of just put it in here and... Right? And you go like that. And if you polish the ends, if you have like some old screwdrivers, tire irons, right? Like the old tire irons from jacks from cars, right? With the lug nut on an angle and everything. Um, or any piece of steel, a steel rod, half inch or something like that, you can basically heat up the end, bang it down, polish the end, make a little hook on it, do stuff like that, and you'll have your own tire iron. All right, so I'm gonna get, I gotta fish out this tube. Now, we don't have to take it all off, but there's like a lot of junk in here. So I'm thinking I might wanna take it outside and rinse it, or maybe we will just take the whole damn tire off and clean it properly. You see, it's like splashing on me. All right, let me go get this apart. Gotta get the tube out, then they'll probably be able to take the rest of the tire off. Oh wait, here it is here. Here it is. That's it right there. So it got damaged right here. So you didn't even see it. All right, I'm gonna go steal a tube from uh, the other machine. Now what's nice thing too, guys, is you know, you can keep some of these tubes. Um, they're useful for making patches, right? Patches? I don't need any stinking patches. No, well, that's badges. We know what I'm talking about. Your stinking matches. Matches? Let's put a little bit more on here. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little bit of a change. So I put the bolts in and the front holes, which are slotted, and then the back hole we're gonna make. So I'm just using a small Stabilo grease pencil. And they to, you know, I always keep these little shorties around for stuff like this. And then you can just get it in there and draw around. And I'll show you why. Um, because the original motor was mounted back really far and I could not get the pull starter off and uh, if you want to service the magneto or the pole starter without having to take everything off. Now we've got plenty of room here. <coughs> All right, so it shouldn't be an issue. And let's just pull the motor off and see if we have our marks. And then I'll go drill it and then we can mount it properly. Yeah, we got good marks here. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna set the punch and I'll drill these out, and uh, we'll be back in a bit. I just opened it up and checked. It's, it was a little milky, but you know, we can't help that right now. That's coming from the seals in here. But let's just put some regular oil in it. Best oil to put in this is like a straight 30, or if you get a pump oil, um, they have some corrosion inhibitors and stuff because this happens, right? You get seals start to go bad and you're trying to use your pump and you gotta make money and you know the story, right? Yeah, it's in the mark. It's in the zone. All right, and just snap it down again. All right, let's go mount it. I just put a key on it that I got from one of the other machines. And a little bit of no-seize. It should slide right on. 
doesn't want to go all the way, it's because there's some kind of dirt. There we go. Well, these can be difficult because, and these may not be the right ones, right? Yeah, they're too long. All right, so I need to find, they're the right thread, but they're too long for this style pump. And that's something you can run into. Now you can cut them. Let me see what I have, because I have so many pumps, I might have something. I don't want to cut those, so let me see what else I got. All right, I took the ones from the other motor, <clears throat> the little Briggs motor. And let's see, I'm just gonna tighten this up. You know, th these are fun to do. We'll check the oil, and we'll put gas in it, and we'll bring it out. And it's actually a Honda filter. So let's put that on, and I'll pop some gas in it, and we're ready. All right, I, I looped up over here, you know, the sleeves and everything, so we'll put the handle on. Because it's nice to be able to take that handle off, and with these push buttons, it'll be nice and simple, and you can fold it out of the way. Uh, we don't have to worry about it, you know. We can just kind of stick it someplace in the shed or in the back of the shop or garage or something. And uh, I, I like that feature. Looks good. Well, I'm glad I went through my hose. I just, I just cleaned them out, and they were all dry and nasty in there. You guys may have seen me do this before, but basically, you know, in there, this is what you use for when you're soldering, sweating copper pipe. Half inch, three quarter brushes are nice to have around this steel, stainless steel. It's all rusty and dry, and I just haven't looked at them in a while. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of modify this a little bit. This is the style push connect, right? Quick disconnect. That's all. We just put them on by hand. <clears throat> and on the other end, I'm going to leave the factory end because that's all I have up here. Now, there's one side that, depending on how you set it up, you can do this. So you can screw this on your hose end, and then you can just connect your hose quickly. So that's how I have the other one set up. So I'm going to leave that. But this one, I set the other one up as a quick connect as well. You don't really need it. I'm going to leave it like this, and that way I can have an extra fitting laying around. I can just use the one hose for now and any wand I want by quick disconnecting the wand. So we're going to leave it set up like this. All right, it's all fueled up. Let's bring it outside and set up. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the water on, and we're going to flush. So I can guarantee you there's some junk in the hose from what I just did, and probably even in the pump from it sitting out. And I just do this anyway. Plus you're pushing the air out, and that's nice to nice to do. And now we'll push anything that might be in here out, just to make sure. Because you get caught in the tip, you got problems. All right, now to make it a little bit easier to start, right? We want water out of the pump. Let's see. Oh, I'm a lefty on this one. That's interesting. I don't really start anything lefty. Let's see. I'm not getting anything. Now we haven't started it in a really long time. So what we can do is give it a little bit of help. Oh, that's quite a bit. starting to warm up okay you can definitely tell it's running better I would do is put a little bit of lacquer thinner in the tank fill up the tank let's go clean something I can see the pump is leaking from the seals from where the the valve body meets with the, the motor um, I like to call the motor the part that the, it's in oil right because that's where your crank is and your pistons are she's leaking a little bit from there but I we knew that um, I was gonna say let's give it another start just a cold start and then maybe I'll bring it in, because it is getting warm. We'll bring it in for an oil change. Yeah, it's nice and hot. Now, 
now I can smell it. Um, you know, it's not bad, but it smells a little old. Definitely, but it's not bad. Now remember, pumps work real hard, so. You know, the pumps work real hard and the engines connected to them, they work really hard. And what I've been finding is, is that much more so than any lawnmower or whatever, it's just the, the amount of force being applied. So we're gonna get this out. And I decided, you know what, I can, I brought the engine up here and it got in my face. And you know, you guys know I got a big nose, right? But I can smell really well and I can smell it's running lean. So we'll pull the plug in a little bit and maybe we'll pull the cover off and we'll take a look. But I'm just gonna let it drip for right now. Um, I just pulled the wheel off since I've got the wheels off, right? All right, I'm gonna let that drip for a minute. I'll be back. I told you it was running lean. All right, so we gotta pull the carburetor out. I forgot, you know, you gotta pull them out because look, how are you gonna get in there? You just can't get in there properly. Now we're coming up to 026. Yeah, yeah, we need this. Yep, that won't go. And this will make quite a big difference. It basically runs well now. I know I went over the valves because the valve cover bolts were a little bit loose and they had the customary no C's on them and uh, the, the cover wouldn't quite come off. So a lot of times what I'll do with valve covers is I'll put the goop on like I've shown you uh, in previous sections or other videos, I let it sit for a half hour, 15 minutes, I put it down, I just kind of put the bolts down, I get everything laying nice and flat, I might run the engine a little bit, and I'll come back the next day and, and just tighten it. Oh yeah, that's taking meat off. Yeah. Now what can also happen is goop an oxidation will get in and make the jet hole out of round and so sometimes sticking those pokers in it isn't enough now typically the next size up for me that I use is 028 and I often find that that's about as big as you'd ever want to go uh, but under load it seems like it runs okay so we're just gonna go here with it and leave it be all right let me put this all back together we're going to put everything back on and i'm going to get ready to do another test all right so i put put a little bit of lucas upper cylinder lube this is fresh gas and i put a little bit this is like a little bit older gas and i put a little bit of lacquer thinner in there and then i'm going to just top off this container and we'll put this into the machine and we'll run it and that's my treatment all right let's give it a quick test We got to get the cover on it and I'm getting it wet. We'll put the cover back on. Let me take a few things off of the machine that I want to clean and we'll get back to it. So far, so good. Hey everyone, that's it for this one. Thanks for stopping in the garage and uh, don't forget to hit the like button, like and subscribe, leave a comment. I love comments, you know, just try to go easy on me. This, I'm really happy. Like I said earlier, uh, this thing is just awesome. I'm really happy with it. Um, also, there's a confidence if I sell it maybe next year or something, there's a confidence level in it. I can get the both of my pumps, you know, fixed up, which I'll make a video on that when I'm ready to do it. And once everything is going good and I have a, a good wand, um, I'll probably buy a new hose, which I'll keep with whatever machine I'd like to, you know, keep, which of the two machines I'd like to keep. Um, I'll put the older hose on this, I'll maybe put a, a, an older wand on it, but it's still all gonna be good stuff. 
And again, there's a lot of confidence knowing that uh, somebody can get a really good machine. Everything has gone over. It's been tested. It's been used. And uh, so I know it'll be good. And I can get a good buck for it. In the meantime, I've got an awesome backup machine. I'm really happy with it. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you on the next one.